Today we are talking about key power ratings and limitations for ESP32 Maker projects. I keep watching this video when starting a new Maker project because it explains some key parameters that I need to consider. We are talking about load limits of a processor board, heat emission and battery life based on examples. Guys, you are witnessing at this moment that I can insert a USB plug correctly on the first try. Ok, I cheated a bit. I guess nobody will ever achieve it. But even when the plugs are annoying me sometimes, I am a fan of using USB to power my maker projects. Our measured device is drawing approximately 197 mA from USB in idle mode. Speedo is measuring speed and acceleration of our slot cars and you are welcome to watch the videos on Electronics Unmasked explaining everything from the idea to the realization. In addition to the total power consumption, we should know the consumption of the peripheral elements as processor boards have certain limitations which we will talk about in a minute. We are adding up the currents of the peripheral elements which I measured in advance using a multimeter. Each of the three infrared sensor boards is drawing 48 milliamps at 5 volts. You could reduce that current to about 20 milliamps by running it at 3.3 volts. However, the 3.3 volts output of my board is rated to maximum of 50 milliamps, which is obviously not sufficient for three sensor boards. So the 5 volts output is my only option for that. You could feed the ESP32 board using a 5V or 3.3V power supply on the corresponding ports. But be careful, these ports are becoming outputs when the board is powered via USB. In case you switch off the separate power supply, your board is highly loaded and possibly damaged. For example, if you are operating a large NeoPixel array, you would need a powerful 5V supply because you can't draw like 1 ampere from your processor board. For smaller NeoPixel arrays, it is possible to get by just with USB powering. You will find that project on Electronics Unmasked where we are showing how to operate a 16 NeoPixel string without a separate power supply. Operating a 12 volt stepper motor, you need a suitable power supply which is giving you the option to derive 5 or 3.3 volts using a linear regulator. Ok, let's continue gathering the currents of our peripherals. We are using 330 ohms series resistors for the LEDs, uh, resulting in approximately 5 mA per LED. Although the currents are not really the same for the different colors, the brightness is appearing similar. I'm telling you this because I'm always unsure whether I need different series resistors for the different colored LEDs or not. Out of 8 LEDs, a maximum of 4 are lighting up at the same time. Currently 1.5 LEDs are lit on average, so I calculate 5 mA for LED 1 and 2.5 mA for LED 2. The ESP32 board draws 45.5 mA, which is the measured total consumption minus the peripheral currents. In the next step, we connected the ESP32 board to a PC via Bluetooth and you can see the incoming data in the background. The current on the USB interface is increasing up to 267 mA while Bluetooth is sending data. 
In this state, the calculated current of our ESP32 processor is about 150.5 mA. Why bothering about power supplies when you can use USB chargers? We were showing a number of suitable ones in an earlier video. USB power banks or batteries are an interesting option for mobile operation. And in terms of safety, the independence from the power grid is a very good argument, in particular for unexperienced makers. Let's calculate the battery runtime. We assume we are having a 3.7V battery with a capacity of 2000mAh that we connect directly to the ESP32 board. Normally, we cannot squeeze the battery completely, because the voltage becomes too low for our processor before the battery is completely discharged. And this is reducing the usable charge to around 90% and our runtime with 1800 mAh will be around 9 hours. You should also keep in mind that batteries are aging and in addition they are losing capacity according to the number of charging cycles. In case we are using a USB power bank, the calculation is a little more complicated because the manufacturers usually only specify the capacity of the internal 3.7V battery. In my case it is labeled 10,000 mAh. In addition to the usable capacity, we need to take into account that the voltage must be transformed from 3.7 to 5 volts, for which we assume a loss of 10%. So on the USB voltage level, we are left with about 6000 mAh, giving us a runtime of 30 hours. In case we were constantly transferring data via Bluetooth, the battery runtime would be 7 hours and the power bank's runtime would be 22 hours. Depending on the usage, the actual runtime is somewhere between these values. Next, we have to talk about the heat emission and limits. The heat power of our board is corresponding to 5 volts times 267 milliamps equals 1.33 watts. Actually, you don't think immediately that there could be a problem with that low power. However, in a small casing without ventilation, it is getting too hot, especially in the sunshine. In the next example, we are drawing more current from the GPIO pins of our board. We are driving 2 times 10 LEDs that are supposed to shine brightly. Each of the LEDs is operated via a 220 ohms series resistor and draws about 9 milliamps. We connected two LEDs to each of the 10 GPIO pins. A buzzer is connected to an additional GPIO pin and I reduced its current to 20 mA using a 100 ohms series resistor. Now I'm wondering if the ESP32 can actually deliver these currents without getting damaged. In the datasheet we can find a maximum rating of 1200 mA in total, corresponding to 40 mA per GPIO pin. However, you should never apply that load, because this value only applies to an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. For ESP32 boards, the maximum ambient temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. The maximum load depends on the temperature difference between actual and maximum ambient temperature, because the processor's heat emission needs to be dissipated. This works better the greater the temperature difference to the surroundings. In other words, at maximum ambient temperature the processor can take almost no load because it is overheating and at lower temperatures it can take more load. At 25 degrees ambient we have 60 degrees difference to 85, at 65 degrees it is only 20 degrees difference which is reducing the power load capacity roughly by a factor 3 corresponding to the temperature difference. 
Normally, you are on the safe side with 20 milliamps load per GPIO pin, provided that you are loading no more than 15 pins. We are operating the lab counter with a USB charger or with a PC in case we want to record racing data over the USB interface. For a minute, I thought about powering it from the racetrack's power supply. The lab counter electronics plus relays is drawing up to 450 milliamps. The power supply is delivering 30 volts maximum. Using a linear regulator, it would consume 30 volts times 450 milliamps equals 13.5 watts in the worst case scenario. 2.25 watts falling on the ESP32 board and 11.25 watts on the linear regulator, which would need a fairly large heatsink to dissipate the heat and it could get really hot in our lab counter housing, which has no ventilation holes. That's why I quickly dropped the idea and we sticked with the USB power supply, which is also keeping us independent from the racetrack. Ok, you could solve that using a low loss step down converter. However, in that case, you need to make sure that the switching frequency of the converter doesn't cause any EMC problems on the analog inputs. I hope the video is helpful to interpret the datasheet right and to estimate power consumption, heat emission as well as battery life for your own projects. And you're more than welcome to watch the videos about the projects mentioned. Now stay tuned and don't forget to support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.